section of women, for example. Now, women have 80% of autoimmune disease. Women have doubled the risk of PTSD. They're much more likely to take antidepressant medications than men. Now, mm -hmm. is that an individual pathology on a part of half the population? Or is it a manifestation of the sensual suppression of the feminine mm -hmm. and the subjugation of the feminine to the masculine under conditions of patriarchy? And what you find with autoimmune disease, it has a lot to do with self-suppression. So there, very often the woman gets autoimmune disease because this society expects women to suppress their own healthy anger. And like under COVID, for example, um, there was a study in the States that showed that women took on the stresses of their families and their husbands, and they felt guilty that they couldn't ease the stresses of their families. Now, there was another study in Canada that showed that after open heart surgery, men recover better than women do. Then they looked at what happens. What happens is that after a man has open heart surgery, he goes home and gets taken care of by his wife. After a woman has open heart surgery, she goes back and becomes the caretaker again. So this automatic suppression of the feminine or the enrollment of the feminine culturally in the service of the what we think is the masculine is a source of pathology in women. But that has to do with centuries old, thousands of years old, suppression of the feminine. So this shows up in a very practical sense in both the physiology and in the mental condition of half the population. It's collective. It it goes back to the burning of witches. It goes back to the to the to the rape. It it goes back to the uh, collective traumatization of a gender based traumatization of a certain part of the population. So, in the Western world, we tend to individualize this and pathologize it. You know, um, there was a study, Thomas, that showed that. Women with symptoms of PTSD have doubled the risk of ovarian cancer, showing the unity of mind and body. But that stressing of women isn't just an individual. By the way, I'm not arguing that men are not stressed. I'm just talking about a certain dynamic here. We're talking about long-term collective hundreds of years of trauma and cultural programming. Now, when that intersects with race, for example, then you get the situation where black or colored or non-Caucasian women have multiple the risk of autoimmune disease, even higher than Caucasian women. And in Canada, an indigenous woman has six times the rate of, of, of rheumatoid arthritis than that of a non-indigenous non-woman.